Today, you don't have to sacrifice an animal like Israel did. Today, it's through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary, his shed blood, okay? Now, if you don't have the shed blood in that verse, you're using the wrong Bible. Because redemption is through his blood. Go with me to Romans chapter 3. Look at Romans chapter 3, if you will. Okay? In Romans chapter 3, the Apostle Paul explains the redemption that's in Christ Jesus. In Romans chapter 3, let's look at verse 24. Romans chapter 3, verse 24. Speaking of how all men have sinned, both Jew and Gentile have sinned, and come short of the glory of God in verse 23. Verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You see, my friend, the word justified means to be declared righteous. If you're going to be justified or declared righteous in the eyes of God, look what it says. It's by his grace. See that? See, It's by his grace through the redemption that is in who? Christ Jesus. Verse 25. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. Now the word propitiation means a fully satisfying payment. If you have a credit card bill, I always use this example, and you have a million dollar credit card bill, but you don't have a million dollars to pay for it, if I was gracious enough to come along and give you that million dollars, we'll satisfy the payment, right? Well, my friend, when Adam sinned, the whole race sinned, and you're a sinner, and sin separates you from God because you owe him a debt. When you have a perfect righteousness like God does, God requires that of all mankind, and we don't have it. So the one who was perfect in his righteousness, his son, the Lord Jesus, took your, your, he took your sin and gave you his righteousness. He, he was the propitiation. He, he fully satisfied the payment, and that's what Paul explains. Look, look at verse 25. Whom God has set forth, Romans 3.25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. You see, my friend, there's no works there. It's, you know what faith is? Faith is the only thing you can do without doing anything. It's taking another at his word. In this instance, it's God. You know, the Bible says that if you receive the witness of men, that the witness of God is greater. You know, if you've ever believed a person, anything they've told you, I'm sure you, we all have, you might believe somebody, somebody you trust. Well, if you receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. And God has witnessed in his word that his son paid your sin debt. And you need to believe that. Look what he says in verse 25. Through faith in his blood. See, it's the blood of Jesus Christ that, that you must have faith in. It's not your works. It's not accepting Christ uh, in your heart uh, or, or invite him into your heart or, or giving your life to Jesus and all that. No, it's by believing that his blood was shed to pay for your sins. That's salvation today. Okay? Look at verse 25. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. You know, my friend, what Paul is saying there as well is that the blood of these animals that were sacrificed, all they did was, was a temporary covering, okay? God told these Israelites in time past that in order to pay for their sins, they had to do the blood sacrifice. They had faith plus works. If that person did not offer the sacrifice, they weren't going to be righteous. We're going to see that in, in sessions to come. What they did, they shed the blood of that animal, all as a type of Christ. And God allowed it, not because that animal took away the sin, but because God knew. He knew back there, in fact, he knew from the beginning what his son would do. And in his grace, uh, even in the, under the law, he allowed these Israelites to sacrifice an animal. Because that sacrifice was a type of the true Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. But now that Christ has come and shed his blood, there's no more need for animal sacrifices, is there? There's no more need for you to try to do it yourself by works. He did it for you. Christ does all the saving, you do all the being saved. Now that's Paul's message for today, okay? Let's look at some more verses. Go with me to the book of Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. As Paul is ministering, uh, early in his ministry. This has been his message from the beginning. The Apostle Paul preached a different message than Peter and the Twelve. The Apostle Paul preached faith in the shed blood of Christ for the remission of sins without works. Peter and those guys um, preached to Israel the earthly kingdom. 
that Christ is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that he, if they repented of their sin of crucifying him, and they're baptized in his name, the name of the Lord Jesus, that God would send him back and send them a kingdom. That's not Paul's message. Look what Paul says in Acts 13, verse 38 and 39. In Acts chapter 13, look at verse 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Now, my friend, imagine after 1,500 years of being under the law, where this man starts to preach that it's not the law that's the issue with God, it's a person, and that person is his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Look what he says. It's through this man, verse 38, that is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. When Paul preached forgiveness, it's always in Christ. Paul never preached the way Peter and them did, that they had to, the forgiveness was, was uh, connected with the law. When Paul preached, he preached God's grace in Christ. And look at verse 39, and by him, by this man, Jesus Christ, all that believe. Now, there's no works there. It doesn't say believe and are baptized. It doesn't say believe and in Paul's day circumcised. It doesn't say believe or any works. It says believe are justified. Remember what justified means? Declared righteous. By believing on Jesus Christ that he shed his blood for you, that instant God justifies you. He declares you righteous. Isn't that a wonderful blessing? Yeah. Look, from all things, from which ye cannot be justified by the law of Moses. You see that? The law of Moses could not justify you as a person. The Ten Commandments cannot justify you. You can't keep them. Dealing with people on the Ten Commandments, the first question I ask them is, what are they? You know, I've never had a person tell me by heart what the Ten Commandments were on the spot. You know why? Even if they could, they know they're not keeping them. Have you ever told a lie? Well, that's, that's, you broke the commandments. And if you broke one, you broke them all. And by the way, the law of Moses was, was a combination of over 600 commandments. I know you don't know all of them, do you? Well, see, the beautiful thing about grace is you don't have to worry about all that. God has, in his son, kept all those commandments for you, and he gives you the blessing of, of, of fulfilling that law in Christ, okay? Jesus Christ is the answer. Now, Go with me to the book of Acts, chapter 20. You're in Acts 13, go over to chapter 20, and let's look at verse 28. As the Apostle Paul explains to the Ephesian elders that after giving him the, the message of grace, he's now on, on his way to other parts to establish a ch uh, grace churches in other parts of the Gentile world. And when he leaves them, he, he, he reminds them of their duty to take care of the saints of the Most High God, those who have trusted the shed blood of Christ for their sins. In Acts chapter 20, look at verse 28. Paul says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. 